on the arid plains of a mystical land, a rendezvous. The men riding towards me are among the most fearsome in central Mali. They're late. I'm not going to mention it. They are known as the hunters. By tradition, they used to track animals to feed their communities. Now they hunt jihadi extremists who already control the north of the country and want the rest of Mali too. The hunters say they have become the protectors of their people. The jihadi extremists they're fighting have links to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. The hunters say they're doing what the Malian army failed to achieve. As their extraordinary outfits suggest, there's mysticism in hunting. I've heard that the hunters also have some special powers, special protections. Can you tell me about that? Can you tell me about the amulets? How do you get them and what is their power? Amulets are magic charms, but the first rule of magical power is you don't talk about the magical power. Can you tell me about this man and the things on his uniform? <laughs> and with that, they're off on patrol. The hunters say their job is to defend Mali from jihadi extremism, but groups like this have also been accused by the government of atrocities and even massacres in villages suspected of harboring jihadis. They are a scary group of people to come across in the bush. I mean, with their uniforms and amulets and skins, and one guy had a machete. I mean, you know, you, you wouldn't want to come across them on your own. I'm journeying through dangerous territory where jihadi killings and kidnappings are common. As we were traveling now, our driver just revealed that last Sunday, he had a very narrow escape involving a mass execution and his colleague, another driver, was taken hostage. Our driver explains he saw three cars on the roadside. <laughs> This is what he found. We count six bodies. His colleague had just been forced to drive the killers away in his vehicle. They spared him after he convinced them he was their kind of Muslim. They told him they were on a jihad. <laughs> I'm heading for one of West Africa's wonders, the fabled city of Djenne. With no clear front line, jihadi extremists can get to these roads quite easily. We've been warned once we get to Djenne, we won't be able to stay for more than a couple of nights. Kidnapping is used here for both terror and finance. Djenne is just across the water, so we're waiting for a ferry to take us across and on the far side of that the area is all controlled by the jihadists and that's what puts Jenny under threat so for this final bit of the journey we're being escorted by armed police this used to be the route for adventurous travelers coming to Jenny to see one of the great wonders of West African civilization but years of fighting with the jihadi groups to the north of here 
have meant that there haven't been tourists here for a very long time. Built at the bend of the river, there's a natural moat around Jenne, but it's not much of a defence. This city was built to welcome passing traders. That wealth helped build one of West Africa's most important centres of Islamic scholarship. Oh, wow. The Grand Mosque is a World Heritage Site. But today, I'm the only tourist here. I don't quite know where we're going, to be perfectly honest. But... It's absolutely amazing. It's an extraordinary structure. You feel a bit worried about walking on the roof, knowing that it's made of mud. But you can see the, the exterior here which has to be remade every year because of the damage that the rainy season does. And the whole area is actually made just like this. There's a whole city made of mud. Jenne is also famous for the mystical men who make those magic amulets I saw on the hunters. They're called maraboots. I'm going to meet Mahamadou. He's from a long line of maraboots who've practiced in Jenne for centuries. Hello. Hi. Chris. What is the role of the marabou in the town? Do people come to you for help? This practice is seen by the jihadists who follow the ultra-conservative Wahhabi branch of Islam as heretic or haram. If the city falls to the jihadists, maraboots like Mohamedou will be in great danger. But for the people of Jenne, there's no contradiction between Islam and the ways of the maraboot. It is really when you walk these ancient streets and alleys that you realise what an ancient culture and civilization this is here in Jenne, and their beliefs are mixed up between what the rest of the world regards as Islam and what they have taken from their ancient West African culture. And it kind of makes sense when you see it here. Opposite the Grand Mosque is the library, where Jenne's oldest families have gathered centuries of Islamic learning. Yet this too could be a key target for extremists gathering outside the city. Bonjour. Kaba. Je m'appelle Krish. Ah, OK. Sorry, le bienvenu. Merci. Merci. Moi, c'est Abu Bakar Garwayaro. Je suis archiviste à la bibliothèque des manuscrits de Jenne. Soyez les bienvenus. The library is packed with books dating back hundreds of years. They all belong to the oldest families in the city. Most are traditional Islamic texts like the Quran, but there are also manuscripts about healing and astrology. Are there any texts here that look at the more mystical traditions of Jenne, away from Islam? Oui. Déjà, si tu as avec ça dans ta poche ou bien attaché au ceinture, donc tu vas te protéger contre tout le mal. 
C'est comme on dit, on peut faire comme un antibal. Ou bien même, même en allant en Brousse, quand il rencontre un peu, soit un lion, un lion farouche, tu peux, tu peux être protégé à travers ça. So what is this? Is this a prayer or is it magic or what is it? C'est une protection. Ça, on peut qualifier ça comme magie. Is this the kind of thing that the jihadists would want to destroy? Parce que moi, je pense que chacun a sa méthode. Parce que peut-être eux, ils ont étudié. Ce qu'ils ont étudié, ils n'ont pas bien compris. For Gaba, there's no problem between these books and Islam. But this use of prayers to bring magic is precisely what infuriates the extremists and puts the library in danger. Garba has been desperately trying to protect Jenny's history by digitally scanning the manuscripts, but he tells me the work is building up. How, how many manuscripts do you have in total? The manuscript of Jenny has about 100,000 manuscripts. We have only 10,600. Donc, peut-être dans les 10% qu'on a pu récolter pour le moment. C'est un travail de longue haleine. Just what will survive in Jenny if the jihadists take over? That's the unspoken fear on everyone's mind. The same kind of extremists have destroyed historic sites in Syria and Afghanistan. And it's happened in Mali already, in a famous place to the north of here. Timbuktu. Cut off by the conflict, the only way into Timbuktu is on UN flights carrying aid workers. We're flying over territory that houses jihadi extremists including Al-Qaeda, Islamic State and Ansar al-Din. In 2012, they took over Timbuktu, imposing strict Sharia law. They were driven out nine months later by the French army, but the city is surrounded and scarred. Uh, welcome to arrivals at Timbuktu. This was bombed by Al-Qaeda during the takeover, the coup, and I guess they haven't rebuilt it. The French are still here fighting the extremists, as are UN peacekeepers. Despite their presence, the airport road is frequently attacked and we have to travel with an armed escort. It's very militarized as soon as you get here. I mean, the airport has been bombed and there are UN bases and French bases right next to it and um, armored cars everywhere. There's an eerie atmosphere on the streets and a real sense of being in the shadow of the extremists. As they were being driven out by the French, the Al-Qaeda fighters destroyed a priceless collection of ancient manuscripts at the main library, the Ahmed Babar Institute. Professor. Bonjour. I've come to meet Professor Abdoulaye Sisse to see where this terrible event in Timbuktu's history happened. Les manuscrits, c'était là C'était ici, oui, oui. Voilà, c'est là l'atelier où on fait les, les, les boîtes de conservation physique des manuscrits. So they just brought them out here C'est ça. Ils ont amené dans les boîtes ici. Maintenant, ils ont vidé les boîtes. Ils ont jeté les boîtes et mis le feu dans les manuscrits. How, how many 4203. Exactement ce qu'on a perdu. 4,000 books here Oui, oh, yes. It must have been huge. Ah, c'est beaucoup. The images of irreplaceable manuscripts in ashes sent shockwaves around the world. There were the same kinds of books I've seen in Jenne that Al-Qaeda find heretic. But they also burned ancient copies of the Quran. Parce que le contenu du manuscrit, ça dépend de ce qu'il traite, ça peut pas s'évaluer. Je sens que c'est vraiment des criminels. 
Professor Cisse still finds the destruction devastating. His staff did save 40,000 manuscripts by smuggling them to Mali's capital, Bamako, during the occupation. But it isn't safe to return them. Today, Timbuktu has been hollowed of its identity as a center of Islamic learning. The professor wants to take me around Timbuktu's ancient streets, but it's dangerous here. As well as the threat from extremists, gangs of bandits are exploiting Timbuktu's insecurity. Kidnapping and robbery have become huge problems. The last British hostage taken here was held for six years. When the Islamists were here, what happened here? The International Criminal Court found the jihadis guilty of dozens of cases of rape and sexual slavery during their occupation. Huh? There is an attack not far from here. Okay. Gunfire has broken out somewhere in the city. The police commander has ordered our guards to get us off the streets. There's confusion about whether this is extremists or bandits, but a couple of days ago, three people were killed in a similar shootout. Despite all the international forces here, the situation seems to be getting worse. Our journey to Timbuktu has actually been cut slightly short because it turned out that there was a bandit attack on our compound where we were staying, which is supposed to be a secure place for humanitarian workers and journalists. Um, and so the, the people who organised it flew out this morning and everyone's leaving now. Back in central Mali, I'm heading to Banjagara. Famous for its stunning natural beauty, it's become better known as the place where Mali's conflict has taken an ethnic and tribal twist. I'm on my way to meet another group of hunters. OK, if you see me touching the ground, it's a mark of respect when you meet these guys. They're from the Dogon people and say they're defending their villages from extremists who in this area mostly come from another tribe, the Fulani. Dogon hunters are accused of attacking Fulani villages and carrying out massacres. And these men don't deny it happens, but claim it's because the Fulani harbour jihadi extremists. Talking to them, I'm beginning to realise that the presence of jihadis is fueling a long-standing ethnic rivalry. They said that they didn't have a problem with the Fulani living amongst them, but then said that the Fulani were basically bad people who were with the jihadists. But by the end of that conversation, they were fairly honest. They said that in this part of Mali, at least, this is not really about a war with extreme jihadism. This is about ethnic groups fighting each other, and they're going to keep at it. Returning to Jenne, it's now clear how deceptive the mystical tranquility is, and I have a stark sense of what would be lost if the conflict breaches these mud walls. I'm going back to see Garba. How are you? Bonjour. Bonjour. Bien dormi? Oui. We leave the library because he's agreed to show me where the majority of the city's manuscripts are stored. 
As Garber explained, about 90% of Jenny's manuscripts are still held in private homes, and he's bringing us to one of them right now. This house belongs to Amadou. He's already given some manuscripts to Garba, but has many more stashed away throughout the house. Some are older than anything Garba has in the library. So this is the original mosque that was in Jenne. In, in the 1300s, the one that has been destroyed and lost. This is, this is a speech from that mosque. How, how long has this been in your family? <laughs> Garba takes me to another room in the house. If this is being used for astrology, then the jihadis will say this is haram, forbidden. Amadou, how do you feel when your family has been here for so long, has looked after these treasures? these ancient books, and there are men a few miles from here who would destroy this. I don't think I've ever been anywhere that felt more like stepping back in time. The way people live, the things they believe, the manuscripts that they keep hidden at home, handed down through hundreds of years, and this city has lived through religious wars before, jihads that have seen mosques destroyed and rebuilt. And the question now is whether this conflict will succeed, whether the jihadis to the north will end up taking over Jenne and transforming this place once again. Garba knows that one day he may have to do what they did in Timbuktu and smuggle out Jenne's treasures before they can be destroyed. For now, he cleans and guards, preserving the soul of a magical city surrounded by war. For watching, click the logo to subscribe for more award winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.